Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agenbar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about how we can make cover versions of songs a bit more interesting. Now this is something that I have to do a lot of and I've done a lot of in the past. So I'm always looking for ways to make covers of songs my own. I will say that unfortunately in this video I'm not able to show you an example due to copyright reasons, but I am going to give you my five biggest tips. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, then make sure to stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kissed me in the rain. There are a lot of famous songs out there that are actually covers that you may not be aware of. Like how Make You Feel My Love by Adele is a cover of a Bob Dylan song or I Fought the Law by The Clash is a cover of Bobby Fuller. And some of these covers are absolutely brilliant and they've become more popular than the original version of the song. But how can we be more original when we're making a cover? How can we make it interesting? And how can we make it our own? Let's have a look at five great techniques that can help you do this. The first and quickest way that we can make a cover our own and change the song is to change the instrumentation. And this can make a huge, huge difference and really transform the song. If you think about it, a piano is perhaps going to sound a bit less aggressive and punchy than a distorted electric guitar. Or even a clean electric guitar is going to sound a lot more laid back and relaxed than a distorted electric guitar. And now a really great example of someone doing this is Tori Amos' version of Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. The way that she changes this rock song into a piano ballad is hauntingly beautiful and really brings out the emotion in the song and the lyrics. The second thing you can do is to change around the chords or the chord progression. Now, it's actually really difficult to swap out an actual chord and replace it with another one. So if you had a progression of C, G, A minor, F, it'd be really difficult to perhaps swap out the G for another chord. But what you can do is you can suspend chords or add notes. So things like fourths and sevenths are a great way of making the chords sound really fresh and new. And this will change the sound of the actual chords. But what you can also do is use inversions to change the sound of the chord progression. Technically, you're still using the same chords, they just sound different. And a really great example of this is when John Mayer covered Free Falling by Tom Petty. The third thing you can do to make a cover sound like your own song is to alter the melody line. And this is possibly one of the most popular techniques that people use. And that's because it works so, so well. It makes you sound as if the song is almost your own, but it's still recognisable, presuming that you don't change the melody line completely. So maybe you could just add a vocal run to an end of a line or an end of a phrase, or maybe where a phrase goes down in the melody, you bring it up in the melody. Whatever you fancy doing, just play around and have fun with it. Sometimes the smallest changes can make the greatest difference. And a really nice example of a singer changing the melody line of a song is Jessie J's cover of I Knew You Were Trouble by Taylor Swift in BBC Radio 1's Live Lounge. The fourth thing you can do is to add harmonies or backing vocals, or perhaps change the original harmonies and backing vocals. Now, this is quite a subtle difference, I'll give you that. However, I do think it helps making the song sound your own. What you can do is if the song maybe only has a higher harmony line in one part of it, you could add a lower one in. Or maybe you could replace the higher harmony with the lower one. Or perhaps you can make the harmony sound a bit crunchier by adding in some suspensions in there instead. And in terms of backing vocals, you can pretty much do what you like. Add in any line that you like, harmonise those backing vocals, play around, see what works, see what doesn't. A great example of people adding harmonies to covers they do is pretty much anything by Pentatonix. And a great, brilliant, amazing example of adding in backing vocals to a song is Aretha Franklin when she added the just a little bit line in Respect by Otis Redding. 
And the fifth thing you could do is to add in a new riff or hook to the song. A slow, emotional hook can make the song sound a bit more like a ballad. However, a fast little jumpy one can make the song sound a lot more energetic. And the great thing about adding a riff or a hook is if you get it right, the song can become so much more catchy and possibly work better than the original did. A really great example of this is Cindy Lauper's cover of Girls Just Want To Have Fun by Robert Hazard. Adding in little hooks and riffs really transformed the song into the smash hit that it is today. So these are the five techniques that I would consider using when I'm covering a song and want to make it sound a bit more like my own. I'd really love to know what you guys like to do, so make sure you let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know in the comments what you thought and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.